um, extend you credit. So you don't have to pay right away. They give you a 30 day extension. By them doing that and you are purchasing, so for instance, I'm gonna say a, um, a lotion, okay? If you have a lotion manufacturer and you go to them and you say, hey, I would like to establish credit with you, they're gonna put your information in and they don't always report it to Duns and Bat Bradstreet, but if they're extending you a net 30 term, you can then report that to Duns and Bradstreet and show that you have been extended credit through some of your manufacturers and suppliers. That is another way for Duns and Bradstreet and the other banks to see, oh, I'm establishing credit, I have a net 30 with supplier A, B, and C, and I'm paying them on time. Will you as a bank extend me credit okay so that's one the other way that i kind of jumped the line i don't know how many of you guys are using quickbooks but if you are using quickbooks okay if you're using quickbooks and quickbooks is tracking how much money you have coming in quickbooks actually has its own business credit system where if you show them hey i'm bringing in thirty thousand dollars a month even if you're bringing in five thousand a month QuickBooks will say, we've been watching you, you're um, paying your bills on time, you're bringing in 10,000 a month, we will extend to you credit. So they automatically will offer it to you if you're using QuickBooks for, I believe you have to use it for at least 90 days for them to see what, you're com you know, what money is coming in. But that's one of the other ways I jumped the line, just by using QuickBooks paying my bills on time and showing how much money I had coming in, QuickBooks was automatically offering me business credit and offering terms. Another thing you can do, PayPal. PayPal is really good about giving you that um, financing. Now with PayPal, if you've been in business for less than a year, um, they'll take your EIN number, but they'll also still ask for your social as um they'll ask for your social as a personal guarantee and i mean that's that's okay when you're first getting started but i don't recommend doing that long term you you're the whole point is to establish personal and business separately but you have to start somewhere so with people like paypal you can use your ein they're going to report it but you're still showing that you're establishing business credit that's why it's so important to have a separate business bank account okay so those are just a couple of very, very quick tips for how to build your business credit. One of the things that I did not talk to you guys about last week, I did talk to you about nav.com. So Miss Marie, if you would mind putting nav.com in the comments, I talked to you guys about nav.com. It's just like, um, it's just like credit karma, but for business credit, that way um, you can see what your credit score is and what kind of things you can do to build it up nav.com helps you there but the one thing that i didn't talk to you guys about last week is something called the paydex p-a-y-d-e-x paydex so for those of you guys who have never heard of the paydex paydex is just like your fico score okay but it's your business fico score so one of the things that I wanted to um, read this to you guys, because I've been doing all kinds of notes, but it says, assembling your business credit gradually, start with little simpler suppliers in order to acquire credit accounts like a net 30 seller, which is what I told you guys about. Charge cards at service stations are also gradually, they're generally simpler to get. And so if you can get a gas card, and use your EIN instead of your social security or even a Staples. Staples card, Office Depot, like I said, companies that you use regularly, if you can get those using your EIN, all it takes is two. It takes two accounts that are low-end rotating credit extensions. So if it's your suppliers that you get a net 30, if it's a Staples account, if it's a Shell gas card, all you need is two. After you get two of them, a Paydex score starts to be established for you, okay? Paydex is, like I said, what you would compare to a FICA score, and this score ranges from zero to 80, 80 being the best, which would be around a 750 in a FICA score. So 
The numbers are not the same, guys. When we're talking about business and personal credit, they are different. So paid X is going to be between zero and 80, which in 80 is equivalent to around a 750 for your uh, credit score, okay? So a paid X is what companies are gonna basically be reporting to Duns and Bradstreet, and paid X is what companies like Wells Fargo, Chase, all those companies that you would be getting like business loans from as an established business, Paydex is where they're looking. That's the number that they're going to rate you and say, oh, well, this person is, you know, a 60. We've seen that they have three business uh, accounts. They are regularly, you know, charging on the accounts. They're regularly paying on the accounts. And I do also say whoever you have a business bank account with, I highly recommend credit unions because they start off with, you know, zero per, zero balance, um, you know, minimums and things of that sort, or companies like Frost Bank who are very uh, small business friendly. But whoever you have a bank account with for your business, those are the people that you want to start applying for credit cards, charge cards to establish your business. And don't think that this, you know, happens overnight. It does take time to build a business credit, but it's not impossible to do. And as your business grows, you need to continue making sure that you establish your business credit separate from your personal credit. So one of the things that I also want, excuse me, wanted to talk to you guys about are some of the, the um, reasons that people fail to um, build business credit, okay? So one of them is the fact that you give up too early. You know, we expect that just like our personal credit, if I get, you know, one or two charge cards, I'm gonna go from zero to 80 in two months. That's not how it works. Traditionally, like if you just go the traditional route, you are, you know, paying your bills regularly, you have your business account, it can take up to two years for you to get a established line of credit with a big bank. Now, if you do some of the things, like I said, like going to NAV, you know, getting some of the simpler um, charge cards, going to Duns and Bradstreet and reporting your information, you can really within six months have a, a good established, um, established uh, paydex score. But it does still take a little bit of time. And so what happens is people are like, oh, never mind, I'll just use my social security. You don't want to do that. Give yourself time pay the bills on time, keep constant contact with, um, oh, with the um, NAV companies and also with Duns and Bradstreet, making sure that your suppliers are reporting your spend. And normally it does take that full first year in business because banks traditionally are looking at small businesses to fail within the first year. So after you're in operation for over 12 months and you filed your first tax report with your EIN, then you become you know, more believable as a company that they'll stand behind. The other thing that I wanted to give you guys as a tip, this is something that makes a really, really big difference. A separate business phone number. And if you can afford one, a 1-800 number, actually increases your believability score with the big banks, okay? So I don't have a 1-800 number, but I do have a separate business line that I've had for over six years. So if someone looks up Camellia Elise, they don't see, you know, Lindsey Brantley's number. They see Camellia Elise's separate business line. And so Banks look at that. They say, okay, she has an email address that's not a Gmail. It's CamelliaElise.com, and she has a telephone number separate as well as her bank accounts. Okay, she has an established business. So that's one of the things that business, like believe it or not, banks will look at that to see, are you using your personal Gmail account? Are you using your personal phone number? And they're going to look at things like that. Um, you definitely need an established business phone number separate from yours, and it needs to be recorded from um, by the 411 Index Helpline in order to um, be established as your business line. So those are very, very important. And then a couple other tips that I wanted to go over with you. Give me a couple seconds. I was I was writing down a whole bunch of stuff that I wanted to um, touch on. Um, 
So you know how there are the five C's of credit when it comes to your uh, personal credit? There are also the five C's of credit when it comes to business. So that was the other thing that I wanted to go over with you guys. Hold on. And um, that's going to be the last thing that I wanted to go over with you guys today. Give me one moment. I hope that this information is helpful because I was just like, what, you know, I was like, what, what did I really do to establish my credit? And what did, you know, what really made a big difference for me? And what did I wish someone told me when I was first getting started? Okay. So the five C's of business and business credit endorsement, okay, from companies like Chase and Wells Fargo. So here are the five business C's, okay? These are different from the five personal credit C's. Character is the same though. The first one is character. And character is very different than um, for us versus your business. So um, they're looking at your business to see what your business experience is, work history, do you have any employees? So they're looking at your character, okay? So that's the first thing. And with any credit line that you're trying to establish, character is always gonna be first, okay? The second one is gonna be credit. It says banks utilize credit detailing offices to take a gander at your installment history. So when you're first getting started, no matter what, you can't just completely separate your business and personal credit because they're looking to see what have you done in the past that shows as a business owner, you are gonna have a good character, you're gonna have good um, you know, credit history. So credit is gonna be one that they're looking at. The next one is income. So we talk about this all the time. When it comes to business, people want to put, oh, I, I didn't have profit, I had a loss. I had a loss so that they don't have to pay taxes. But at the end of the day, if you want to establish business credit and you want to be able to get SBA loans, you have to show a profit. So the company, the bank is always going to look to see, okay, has this business made any money? If you haven't made $5,000, why would I extend you a line of credit for $30,000? So the third C is income. They're always going to look to see, does this business have any money? Do they have any revenue? Because if you don't have any revenue, how can you pay me back? Okay. The next one is going to be limit. They um, need to know how you'll have um, the options to reimburse the credit if it's given. So they have to determine what your limits should be when it comes to the credit. So they're always going to try to establish a good number. Like I said, if your business has made $5,000, how can they extend you $30,000? So a bank is going to look at the amount of money that you made and they're going to establish a limit that they're willing to um, give you. And then the last one that I wanted to go over with you guys is insurance. Believe it or not, most banks um, are going to make sure that um, they see that you have insurance and that you have protected your assets, okay? So they're, one of the five C's for banks is going to be insurance. They want to know that you have protected your assets and that they can protect your assets. Um, they're looking at things like your stocks, your business resources, your land. What is it that you have that can help them reimburse you know themselves what assets do you have if all of a sudden you just have no money can you reimburse them with your assets and then also have you covered your assets in the event of a disaster so once again i'm just going to reiterate the five c's of personal credit are very different from the five c's of business credit and the five c's for business credit are going to be your character, they're always going to look at your character. They're going to look at your credit and installment histories, your income for the business. They're going to look at limits and limitations for the business, and they're going to look at insurance and assets available. So those are going to be the five, um, those are going to be the five C's. They're not all C's, but that's the five C's for business credit. All right, so if you guys don't have any other questions, like I said, I just kind of wanted to give you 
a brief overview of some of the tips that you know I myself did. Like I said, definitely look up the Frost program and the notes of everything we discussed are here. Once again, I want to thank Marie for putting all that stuff down down here for you guys. But the um, notes are in. I'm just going back over them really quick. So the notes that we put here, first of all, is going to be Frost Bank. Look at that Frost Bank Next Step program and then look at your bank and see if your bank has any small business programs or small business credit cards that you can utilize to start, um, you know, gaining some business credit with them. The second thing that we put down here is the net 30 term. Start to establish credit extensions with businesses that you purchase from every day, every week, start to establish credit with them. Um, I do recommend using QuickBooks because QuickBooks itself has a business credit and they're looking at what you spend as a way to also extend you credit for your business only, not personal. They don't have your personal information. Um, definitely use your, uh, make sure you have your LLC, your EIN, a separate business phone number uh, for your business, um, a separate business bank account, um, like I said, have an LLC or an S Corp. And then if you guys did not know about it, you need to start looking up what your Paydex is, which is similar to your business FICA score. Instead of looking at, you know, zero to 800, zero to 80 is what the Paydex number will be. And then, like I discussed it last week, nav.com, nav.com is a, it's a credit karma website for business so that you guys can go in and look and see what your current business score is. If you don't have a Duns and Bradstreet, get one of those as well. So that is just a recap of everything that I've gone over. I hope that um, this was some helpful information for you guys. If you have any further questions, I'll share the resources that I can with you. And um, I'm excited to keep going. Oh, here's one. Okay. What if you're using Square, not QuickBooks? Should you switch? Okay. So Square has its own credit um, where you can look at Square and, you know, if you're bringing in $10,000 a month, Square will every now and then say to you, hey, you're bringing in $10,000 a month, you can borrow $2,000 from us. But to my knowledge, Square does not report that to Duns and Bradstreet. So yes, I would personally, I, I use Square. Let me just say this. I use Square to process payments, but I use QuickBooks to actually look over all of my expenses, all of my revenue, I, you know, what comes into my bank accounts, what goes out of Square. So I wouldn't switch, I would add QuickBooks so that like Square is just one of my accounts in QuickBooks. I can put all of my accounts and all my expenses in QuickBooks. It's my online accountant basically. So it don't switch from Square. I'm not saying take Square off, use Square but you would use QuickBooks to report all of your income, all of your bank accounts. You can tie in all of your credit card companies. So don't dump Square. I definitely use Square a lot. So use Square, but you're, when it comes to building business credit, you do need something like QuickBooks because QuickBooks, like I said, they have their own Paydex system and they do report to Duns and Bradstreet. Square does not as far as I know. That is an excellent, excellent question because um, you know, a lot of people use Square, like I said, I do, but I don't use Square as the only, you know, accounting software. I, I definitely would use QuickBooks so that they can help you build your business credit faster. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in and it's customary to, you know, toast on our way out. So the way that we came in is the way we're going out. Happy hump day. You guys made it through. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. And as always, if there is any business topic that you guys want to discuss at any time, please feel free to DM me and we will just continue to answer those questions for you, um, whether it's myself, the other instructors. And once again, I am super, super excited to announce that all of those CEUs that we discussed the vaginal rejuvenation, the yeso therapy, the cake taping, they are all live and the links are in the bio. So y'all start booking those classes. We already have students booking them. 
Talk to you guys soon. And you are more than welcome. You're more than welcome for all the um, information. Y'all have a great evening.